Ah, uh, nothing says relaxing like the warmth of a campfire. Hey everybody, TBG Hunter here, and welcome back to more Slide 2 Band of Thieves. Last time, we started planning our attack against Neela as she has taken control of Clockwork's body and is still flying around the airship, as you can see right over there. We took out two of the generators, both with Sly and with Murray, and technically Bentley, but he only helped Murray get inside the generator. We still got two generators left to take out, we still got some clue bottles to snag, and we also have some treasure that we need to collect. So I say we go and head over to the other upper part and grab any clue bottles that might be over there. Then we'll start doing our little, our little treasure hunting. So let's just make our way up over here, drop on down over here, slide across here, and go across the I still have no idea what these are supposed to be I can't the fact that they're flapping like this makes me think oh maybe these are wings or maybe stabilizers but at the same time it looks more like they're just back fins for the airship very tattered back fins they really do arpeggio oh wait no he can't he's dead I was gonna say he really should probably look into repairing those but I feel like he should probably look more into repairing himself at this point and that's also something I, I wanted to talk about, is the death of Arpeggio in this game. Uh-oh. I'm just gonna hide right here as I talk about it. For the longest time, I never understood how he died, because it's the classic off-screen death, well, technically on-screen, but you don't see it. Uh, you, you see Nilo kneel down, and basically you see Arpeggio explode into feathers, and then you see his monocle go flying across the floor. And I always wondered what she did that actually killed him. For the longest time, I figured that, oh, she just crushed him with her head because that's what it looked like. But at the same time, the way that she moves when she kills him makes me think that she actually ate him. Because it, she sort of makes like a, a swallowing animation in her body. I don't know. It's, it's something that's always kind of bugged me for the most part. Because it's just like, how exactly did he die? Well, either way, he's dead. He won't be forgotten, really, because he wasn't really much of a character to begin with. And I don't see where that other clue bottle is. Actually, I think I might have a good idea where the clue bottle is, but for now, we'll hold that off for later, because we got a treasure right here. I believe every single treasure in this area actually gives you about a minute to get it back to the safe house, which is kind of generous, to be honest, because, it, again, this is not a very big level. I would argue to say this is probably the smallest level in the game lengthwise. It's just probably one of the more vertical levels in the game. Let's run over here. I do hear the clinking of a bottle, but I think that's just the one up by where the slime marker is, so we can't really do much about it. Up up here, take this guy out, and drop off the treasure. There we go. One treasure dropped off. We still don't have nearly enough money to get the stuff for Bentley and Murray, so what I might do is actually go out of my way to do some off-screen grinding for the last couple of coins if we are just short of getting the, the stuff for it. I thought I heard clanking. I guess with anything, we can just start the slime mission now and then also just look for it as we're doing the stuff for slime. Because, of course, what do you think the slime mission would be to get into the generator? If you said pitpocketing, well, you'd be right. To disable that engine room, you and I are going to have to work together. Happy to have you along, Bentley. What do you need me to do? Take pocket the guard's keys to the engine room. Once you've got the door open, I'll take over. Okay, you should take your position. It's not gonna take me long to lighten these guys with their keys. Just gonna smash that. All right, so we got a few guards to take care of. Not that much of a problem. They're very easy pickings, and also we can actually take them out after we get their keys. There we go, there's key number one. Of course, we do have five keys to get, and the guards are all in unique locations, and also all over the airship, so... Well, it won't be e hard to take them, their keys away from them, it's going to be very cumbersome, because we're going to be doing a lot of back and forths here. I hear the clinking, but where is it? Oh, 
I always thought it was like up here on this old platform right here, but no, I don't see it. Hang on. Huh. I guess I was just hearing things. Alright, well, in that case, I'll just take the shortcut over to this card then. Pass, and then we'll go relieve him of his keys. The other guard is down there, and then the rest are up on the upper levels. Uh. Okay, there. Alright, that takes care of him. Let's head on over here to this guard and wait for the searchlight to pass over. There we go. over here. This one's going to be a little bit tough to get. I forget the trick to this one. I think we need to get to the other side of the guard to relieve him of his key. How did... Uh, that's one thing I never liked about these guys. The fact that the small guys can still see you, even in spots where it looks like they cannot see you one bit. I wish they were more consistent about where a guard can see you and can't see you in this level. Oh well. At least one thing they're consistent about is relieving, uh, giving me these keys. I forgot there was actually a guard patrolling up here on th this platform. I, I don't know what this is. I guess it's just a, a propeller location for the giant propeller right here. We'll just wait right here for him to just walk on over us, and then we'll sneak out behind him and relieve him of his key as well. Come on. Come on. Just a little bit closer. A little bit closer. Good enough. And there we go. There's one more key to go. Just remember where that last clue bottle is. The last guard is right over there at the back of the engine room that we just blew up, so we know exactly where he is. I just really wish I could figure out where that last clue bottle is because I feel like the last clue bottle in this level is always the one that has eluded me the most out of any clue bottle in any level in the game. I'll just have to look for it when I uh, get Bentley. It should be in a spot where Bentley can get. I'll be right back. I've said it before and I'll say it again. Be very careful going across those propellers. Otherwise, you're going to be making a very long bat track back up to here. Anyways, let's just grab the money from this guy and take him out. Let's head on over here. And I believe our target is right down at the entrance to the generator right here. Yep, there it is. Alright, uh, I think I could probably just hop on over there behind him. Just swing on down there. Pick this guy's pocket real quick, see if we can get some money out of it. We're already at a thousand, so we're getting pretty close to being able to grab the first set of gadgets for the game. But for now, let's just hop on down here and pick the keys from this guy's pocket. Here we go. Room door. 
And of course, the engine room that Bentley is in is nowhere near here. In fact, it is actually on the exact opposite end of the airship. In the back part, at least. Uh-oh. Uh, I'm just gonna take you out, take you out, take you out. There we go. And I think, yeah, even the flashlight guard's going after me. So let's say we take the high road. I feel like I've been using these balloons a little too much, but they're just really useful in being able to get up there. Never mind, as I was going to say before, so I would not get onto the damn strut up there. But let's try this again, shall we? Let's climb up here. Get a little bit more height this time. And paraglide down to there. Still no sign of a clue bottle up here, which is actually kind of worrying, because I feel like I... I've just barely missed that clue bottle. Alright, still nothing. Oh well. Let's just go open up the door for Bentley so he can start doing his stuff. Okay, Bentley, you're on. Very easy, if not a little tedious. Just gotta shoot out the bulb, then shoot out the bulb above it, and that's about it. I feel like they could have made this a little bit harder if by the electricity shoots out to a different bulb on the bottom floor, the upper floor. But that's just me. Maybe they, that was originally the plan, but it was a little too hard to get the shots off, especially with how much you need to lead your target with Bentley's crossbow. couple more bulbs to take care of. So far, so good. I think there's only one more thing of bulbs to go for. There they are. And I missed. And we're done. Okay, pal. You're all set to bounce up to the next level. And you. If I'm reading this right, it looks like you need to bomb those All right, you heard the big guy. This is probably the most technical I've ever heard Murray in this series. Granted, he's probably just looking off Bentley's notes or computer, but still. Just gotta be super careful with these drones. Just keep running. What am I still missing? I'm missing one right here. And the reason why I'm dropping off two bombs is actually because it takes two bombs to take out a single power node. Just to make sure that no one tries to activate auxiliary power, just because I like being destructive. Let's make our way back out of here, see if we can find out that last clue bottle, and head back to the safe house to swap over to Murray, and we'll finish up the destruction of all the generators. Alright, we finally made it to the location of the final hidden clue bottle. If you're wondering where it is, well, it's on the set of... Uh, it's on the balloon with the, the fire underneath it on the right side of the safe house. That that was always the one that always eluded me, just because it's in such a simple location that I always overlook it. Anyways, there's our final clue bottle. Let's go swap to Murray, and let's finish up the destruction of these generators. We'll save getting the last of the treasure with Sly for after we're done here. 
All right, let's swap on over to the big guy, head back over here. It's not that much of a run to get to Murray's job, thankfully. Just jump onto the pressure plate, hop up here, and there we go. Murray, it looks like I'm going to need some help getting into that engine room. Happy to help. Bentley tells me that the door to that room is locked down by wall-mounted power stations located throughout this blimp. I'll need you to take out all the power stations and then pry open the door by hand. No sweat, Sly. So, making a return from way back at the start of the game is basically taking out the alarm nodes, now called power stations. But it's, it's basically that one mission from the start of the game, which... It, I guess it's nice. I kind of like that mission, to be honest. It was a, it was a simple one. It was a fun little combat challenge. Although with this one, it's not really alarm station, so you don't really have to deal with enemies. So it's a lot easier than it was back at the start of the game. But of course, we got five of them to take care of, and they're all located back there. Thankfully, none on like the really high floors of the blimp. But also, it's probably going to involve us getting into a lot of fights. In fact, speaking of fights, I'll take you with me. And why not? Let's use him as the projectile for this next alarm node. Two. There we go. Thankfully, the ones back here are probably the easiest to take care of just because there's so many things for Murray to, to throw. And also guards. Lots of guards. Unless Murray decides to just throw them off the edge. There we go. in the skies. Come here, buddy. Come here. Are you kidding me? Fine. I'll just take you the old-fashioned way. Where's that last node? There it is. Looks like the power locks are off and on. Come on back and try it over. Final generator is sitting right over there, and unfortunately, it looks like I'm gonna have to take the long way to get to it. Unless Murray actually does, and you know what? Get out of here. Ah, uh, no, he just can barely make it. I think maybe I can trick jump. Nope. All right, it was worth a shot at least. I'm sure it is possible to get Murray up there. I just hit it at the wrong angle. chasing after me right now. I don't see any guards coming after me. I don't think Neela saw me, so yeah, I don't know why the alarm is going off. Your turn, buddy. Thanks for appearing out of literally nowhere to jump in there, Sly. So yeah, bit of a platforming challenge makes sense with, given Sly's character, and honestly, this is probably the most fun out of all of the generators to do, just because I really do love the, the fast jumping challenges that this game gives you, like the one back in the crypt during the Contestas level. There we go. Alright, on to the second floor. Just gotta... 
jump onto these razor blades. What even is the purpose of these things? Literally. Like, I, I'm trying to wrap my head around it, but I see no reason why an engine would need these giant razor blades in it. And it can't be like a security measure because the electrified floor would be enough of a security measure. And well, either way, it's a very dumb security measure because it's very easily to exploit. Hop on over here, hop on over here. Before we go and shut down this generator, of course, break this stuff. And open up the safe. Seven, two, five. There we go. Make him return from the first game because Sly apparently lost, forgot the ability to, forgot the fact that he could turn invisible. We can now turn invisible again. We'll talk about that later because after we go and get the rest of the treasure. But for now, let's shut down this generator and see what we have to do to take out Clockla. In an unexpected windfall, I've been contacted by Inspector Fox over the shortwave radio. She's well aware of the dire situation we all face if Clockla becomes immortal and has agreed to join forces with us so that we can destroy the robotic bird. The only catch is that she's unable to locate this blimp on her radar. To help her hone in on our position, we'll need to boost the strength of four local radio towers. Once Inspector Fox is in range, she'll take one of us on board to act as a tail gunner in a dogfight against Clockla. This is it. We don't have time for another plan. We're almost over Paris, and if that hate hypnosis light show goes off, well, you know the story.